Well, I must admit, although it's a little embarrassing that in my early years of ministry, I was somewhat of an anti-Santa Claus type of person. Matter of fact, my youngest children, we never really referred to him other than when they saw him in the stores or malls or pictures, we talk about the funny man. Now that kind of morphed over time in our culture today, in the Christmas culture, you can't really get away uh, from uh, the knowledge of Santa Claus. And I don't think it's necessarily anything evil, although in my early days, I'd heard a sermon about Satan Claus. <laughs> you know, Santa and Satan interchange letters. You've got the same word. And uh, he wears a red suit. And in Revelation, there's a the devil's pictured as a great red dragon. And the devil's thrown into the lake of fire. And Santa Claus is always ending up in the fireplace. <laughs> And uh, there was an argument being made that Santa is taking the place of Christ or the emphasis from, from Christ in Christmas. And uh, I guess an argument can be made, but there's other arguments that can be made. Uh, if we were to approach our cultures and the Santa Claus culture as really coming from an outsider, it's amazing what we could learn about God from the legend of Santa Claus. After all, you have someone who is apparently omniscient and is um, a giver of gifts. Uh, he rewards good behavior and punishes bad behavior. Wow, it sounds a lot like God to me. And so I think there's a lot that people can learn from uh, the Santa Claus legend, and it can actually be used to give people an appreciation of who the real giver of gifts is. Uh, Second Corinthians tells us that thanks be to God for his unspeakable gift. Uh, James tells us every good and perfect gift comes from above, from the Father of light. So, so much we could learn about God through Santa Claus, but I think there's something a little deeper there too. I think I was put off initially on Santa Claus from my upbringing, uh, I had a strong, of course, like most children, strong belief in Santa Claus at a young age, one of his early defenders at a young age. And um, one day uh, when it came to the Easter Bunny, I wasn't so sure, but one day I saw my uncle wrapping up uh, that nice clear plastic on the Easter Bunny basket. And I, ooh, huh, must not be an Easter Bunny. And then I talked to my you know what? I don't think there's a Santa Claus either and which they basically confirmed. And uh, as I went a few more years along, I thought, you know what? I think it's time to dump this belief in God too. Belief in Easter Bunny was wrong. Belief in Santa Claus was wrong. I guess belief in God is not a good idea either. Uh, but there's another thing going on. I believe that it teaches us, these longings we had even as children, teaches us how much in our heart, we really know there's a God, and we really do want to believe in Him, particularly as children. Uh, Jesus said, uh, let the children come to me, for if such are the kingdom of God. Uh, he says, um, don't offend one of these little ones, uh, because their, their spirits always behold their face of their Father in heaven. There is a guarantee of children going to be with God if they were to die as children. Uh, we have this assumption that children have this, for lack of a better term, natural uh, tendency to believe in God. They believe there's more than this life. They believe, they believe there's someone greater than us and this someone is good and this someone can reward them and take care of them. Now, as we get older, like I did, we decide, no, I don't want to believe that. Now, it's very interesting that uh, although uh, we have a rewarder of good and a punisher of evil, uh, when it comes to our sin, the, one, the punishment of evil actually fell upon Christ. And so that's why we're told that uh, he that believes on the Son has eternal life. He that doesn't believe does not have life. After John 3.16, we have 17 and 18, and John 3, 18 talks about he that believes on me, Jesus says, has eternal life. And he that believes not on me does not have life, but the wrath of God abides on him because he has not believed in me. Now we find out that the real condemnation of the world 
is not the sin that we have done, although that's nothing good. The real condemnation of the world is that we refuse to believe in the gift God has provided for us to be saved simply through believing. So uh, ultimately, the tragedy of a lost future as far as heaven and hell is concerned, that tragedy is connected with a failure to believe. And yet we started out, pretty sure we started out with that innate ability to disbelieve. There's something more, there's someone there, and he will take care of me. Maybe it's time to get back to a little bit of a childlike faith. Yes, Lord, you are there. Yes, you do take care of me. And I am going to believe that you gave your son, that whoever believes in him will have everlasting life. Greatest gift in the world, the gift of life through faith in Jesus Christ. My thought for today, thanks for listening.